In this session, we'll understand about ABAP type concept, uh, where I'll introduce you to these two terms, data objects and data types. The fundamental task of an ABAP program is to process data. As I said earlier in the uh, introductory session, in SAP, we develop business applications. So the purpose of this business application is mostly to process data. So for example, if you're creating a sales order, you capture the user inputs and update that data in the database. Uh, when you create a report, you pull this data from the database, process it and show it to the user on the screen. Or you may just uh, create an interface program where you're pulling this data from the database and pushing it to another system. So whichever the case may be, the fundamental task of an ABAP program is really to process data. So one catch here is that all the ABAP statements that you write can only work with the data that is locally available in the program. So for example, if I want to print some output, uh, I, I want to process data from the database and show it to the user on an output screen, then I cannot write an ABAP statement directly to let it go and work with the data that is there in the database. I have to actually bring the data from the database, store it in my program memory, and then use ABAP statements to access that data locally and then process that data. In order for you to bring the data from an external source, it could be the user inputs on the screen or the data that is persistently stored in the database. To process this data or to use your ABAP statements, you need to first bring that data into your program and when you bring the data in the, into your program, you need to define certain memory locations in your program where you can store this data transiently and then use your ABAP statements to access that data from within the program memory. Now, when we are talking about the data, the data could be of different types. You could be processing a phone number, you could be processing a customer name, uh, you could be processing currencies, quantities. So we have different types of data. So this ABAP type concept is all about typing your program memory. So if, if I'm plan planning to define a program memory to store some uh, data from the external source, then I need to tell my program or tell the runtime environment that this is the type of data I'm planning to store in this memory and later I can use an ABAP statement to access that data. So that brings us to these uh, two concepts, data objects and data types. So data objects are the actual physical memory units in your ABAP program that you define to store the data. And when you're defining this memory units, we also call them variables. When we define these memory units, we need to statically mention what type of data that memory can store. Is it a character type data? Is it a numeric type data? What is the length of that data that you're planning to store? So all this technical information about that particular memory is derived from these data types. So we have these data objects, which are actually the physical memory units with which your ABAP statements can work. And to define these data objects, we refer these data objects to something called data types, which actually have the technical specifications, like the type of memory, the length of memory, and if you're planning to store currencies or quantities, you also define how many decimal places that memory can store, right? So that's your data objects and data types. In short, data objects are the actual physical memory locations that you define in your program. But to define these memory locations, we need to specify certain technical attributes and these technical attributes are derived from data types. So to define this data object, we use few keywords and one of the main keyword is data. So the keyword in the previous session, I talked about keywords. The first word in a statement is a keyword. So if you want to define a data object or the physical memory unit of your ABAP program, then we use this data keyword. Similarly, if you want to define a data type, which where you can maintain the technical specifications, uh, data types are more like a template. They do not actually occupy any, any memory in the program. We simply use them so that we can refer our data objects to these data types. I'll be talking about these data objects and data types in detail. So in the next uh, session, we'll talk about data types and 
uh, in the later session, we'll talk about data objects one by one. So the keyword that we use to define a data type, there's again a concept called predefined data types where uh, the kernel, the SAP system kernel has certain data types predefined. So whenever I'm creating a data object, I can refer to these predefined types. Otherwise, I can also define my own data types in the program. If you want to define your own uh, data type, the keyword that we use to define the data types is types. So as I said, I'll be introducing you to these keywords one by one. So the next couple of keywords that we'll, that we'll be exploring is data and types. So we'll see what is the syntax to use the data keyword to define a, a data object. And we'll also see what is the syntax we use to define data types using the types keyword. So if I can uh, break down an ABAP program into two parts, then the first part will be the global declaration part. I'll show you a program. So in this global declaration part of the program, we use this data and types keywords to first define our memory locations for the program where we can store the external data that we are planning to process with our program. So once I make all those declarations, then in the procedural part, I'll write the actual logic. For example, uh, if I want to process data from a particular database table where uh, let's say there is a table called Mara. So in the SAP system, a standard SAP table, Mara stores the material master data. Now, if I want to process certain materials in my program, or if I want to process the material data in my program, then this Mara table has many fields. So I have to write one select query to fetch this data from this table and store it in the memory locations or the data objects that I've defined in the global declaration part of my program. And then later again, I can write other ABAP statements to work with that data. So in the global declaration part, first you define your memory locations and then you use your other ABAP statements to work with that data that is stored in those program memory locations. So that's we, that we call procedural part. So you can think of it as the global declaration part has all the data. So when, whenever you want to start writing the program, ABAP program, first you need to understand what data are you planning to process in the program. Look at the tables that are storing this data and then accordingly define those memory locations. For example, if I want to process a material number, I'll open this table and see the field where the material data, material number is stored. And I'll notice that in the table, it is a character 18 field. So the material number field in SAP is character 18. In the next video, we'll see this character 18 field. So I'll define a character 18 field in my program so that when I write a select query to fetch this data, I'll get this data from the table and store it in my program memory where I've defined a field for storing this material data or material number. So once I store this, then I can use another ABAP statement to let's say print it in the output. So I can use a write statement to print whatever is stored in that, in that particular memory. Right? So your ABAP program can be broken down into two parts the global declaration part and the procedural part. So in the global declaration part, we define memory locations uh, where we plan to store this external data. And in the procedural part, we, we use ABAP statement to actually write the program logic. So what you want to do with that data, basically. Whether you want to show it in the output to the user or you want to push it to another server. So all this logic we write in the procedural part of the program. So whenever you want to start developing a new program, the first thing is you have to spend some time in understanding what is the data you're planning to process and accordingly define those memory locations first and then you start with your actual program logic. You cannot just write the logic uh, uh, without knowing what data you're planning to process. Okay, And uh, the data that is stored in the database is called persistent data. So that is always there. You Even if you shut down your SAP system and turn it on back, you still have that data. It is stored persistently. Whereas the data that you are storing in your program is called transient data. 
and the life of this data is only till the program is running once the program execution ends all that data that you stored in your program will disappear it is not available so when you are running a program and if that program is generating lot of data then that data is only accessible while the program is running uh, let's say uh, you, the user runs a report and he sees some output and that output the data that you are displaying in the output is existing till the program is active the moment the user closes that program all that data is cleared off from the program memory so you cannot access it further so if you want to generate the data again you have to run the report so each time the report runs it actually brings the data from the database and then generate the report output so any data that you see on the program screen in the output screen for example and if you want to access that data later then you have to persistently save it in the database okay so we get some reports which are read only where you just bring the data from the database and apply the logic and show it to the user and he sees the report closes the program and next time he wants to see something he'll he'll run the report again but sometimes the user says okay you you are showing me this output and i want to make some changes to that and save it back uh, so that i can access it later then we have to include certain features in our program where uh, let's say we can provide them a save button so once they make the changes on the screen they can click on this save button and we can update this data in the database so that the next time they come to uh, execute the program we can process that previously saved data from the user so the key point is all the data that we'll be processing in our program is transient when the program is running you are actually making a copy of the data that is stored in the database into your program and working with this copy of the data so you won't be working with the data in the database directly but you are actually making a copy of that data in the program and you are working with the copy so when the program is running you are actually having two copies of the data one one date one copy is in the database that is stored persistently and one copy is in the program but uh, the only difference is that the data in the database is persistent whereas the data that is being processed in the program is transient okay in the next session we'll understand data types uh, we'll try to uh, understand the different uh, data types available uh, the predefined types and uh, we'll also see how you can define your own uh, data types in the program and then after that we'll talk about the data objects these these two concepts are the fundamental concepts so you need to understand them because every program that you write relies on these concepts so it it's important that you get these fundamental concepts right okay again if you are new to programming don't worry uh, this is a concept that is there in every programming so if you have already done some programming then you already know these concepts but if you are new to programming don't worry uh, as you keep writing your programs these things will become second nature because this is something you'll be using in every program so as you keep writing you'll be using them over and over again so at the end of the day uh, you sh should start feeling comfortable with those concepts but uh, i've noticed people are new to programming may get a bit confused with these concepts but uh, that's a temporary thing uh, by the time you create your first program these concepts should automatically uh, make sense to you okay so see you in the next video where we talk about data types